I'm here today with MC Rockaby of Turmion Capulot to talk about Omen X or Omen 10. I don't, I don't know how you guys are, are, are calling it, but I'm assuming that X and that 10 has to do with your 10th record, correct? I think um, it's developing to the Omen 6. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, think, I, I, think, I think that is better. I think that's a, a, a... It seems to be that the album is quite good. I'm getting a mashas and stuff like that. Well, I, I think that's what you should do. I mean, it's a celebration of the release of the album. So a massage is in order. Yeah, I've been massaging legs like uh, two years. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. First, before we even talk about the record, uh, how would you describe the evolution of the band sound-wise from the first album all the way to now this new record? Well, I think um, the latest one is um, one step forward from the previous ones because we have sounded uh, about the live stuff. Same time, uh, same, same like after that this live stuff that we play. So I think this is a more produced album like we didn't care about live sounds or uh, performing or anything like that. Only studio, because we know when we perform that thing live, it's going to be really much more harsh and more violent and stuff like that. So we know that it's going to be good in, well, yeah. The point was that, uh, that the album sound is one sound and the live sound makes it more violent. Mm -hmm. And you can see us performing. So it has two dimensions kind of. When, when it comes to the, to the creative process for you guys going into an album, uh, do, do you set boundaries on this is the Turmion Katilat sound? This is how far we can go? Or for you guys, there's really no boundaries. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. Yeah, the latest one that you said, it's the point. When we started this band, we tried to do as much of uh, genres and uh, different kind of things to develop the music to that way that we don't have uh, in the future the boundaries. And now I think we can use any kind of samba and salsa and disco and black metal and maybe some folk music and anything with our music to bring it to be still our own music. So that is the point because I'm a musician. I'm, I'm not so much a lyricist. She is the one who does the <laughs> most of those. And uh, of course, our other band members do lots of stuff with lyrics and music. Like Janet also composes at least half of the album. Maybe I compose the other half and Bobby Undertaker takes with Kun Kesä Kuoli with those brutal riffs and he has something to do with it also. So we have developed this thing to be like, um, I don't know, Somebody would call it hippie crew, but we are <laughs> way more violent at the stage, so it's it ain't hippie crew. Uh, but the thing is to do together, so we are one kind of a family. Uh, Everybody has the, their own voices, mm -hmm. but maybe I think I am the guy who pushes everything together, so the voices can. I was, the loudest. I was going to say, everybody has their own voice, but yours is the loudest. No, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe Saku is also loud, but the, maybe maybe it's uh, that way that uh, I can make the all guys sound the lo loudest. So I'm still the manager, but <laughs> you have to have the manager. <laughs> when, when you guys are going into an album, do you work separately on on the record or is really like a, a team effort and, and and you guys work together to develop what that album is going to be uh we we work really closely but only in the internet because uh we have lots of gigs and when we meet we drink 
<laughs> Nobody wants to drink when they are working. <laughs> so, that, 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 that kind of hurts the production. That kind of hurts the yeah. productivity, I should say. We prefer to change the files. <laughs> That's more better way for us. And when we have rehearsal or recording for the album, then we meet and, well, me and Janne are the producers and all the, all, the only drunk guys in that band. So the producer can have some, some kind of uh, delay sometimes when we meet. Yeah, I, I can I can see the 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 party takes over. Uh, it, it, was this was was this a challenging record for you guys, or was, was there any new challenges on, on this record that perhaps you didn't see before in previous albums? Well, yeah, we had uh, kind of a positive challenges because we had this time to be in studio and do stuff. Like, well, actually, as I counted earlier we have uh, three albums of really good material to release but uh, of course we want to also perform this stuff and when you perform your stuff you get the energy from you and the guys who are listening the gigs and you get the thing that what do you want to do next it's the next uh, inspiration from the audience and then we do that but the corona stuff with global warning we had a uh, lack of gigs so uh, it didn't give us so much the information about the audience or the things that you want to hear or see with the people's faces on the next album when you go to the stage so that was difficult to choose the uh, songs for the album but that's why it's more powerful and dangerous because it sounds like us not like the audience mm -hmm. it's our sound now and uh, of course it was kind of a, I, I wanted to do uh, lots of experiment with the sounds not the live sound with Turmion Katilet that we had the powerful live sound on our earlier albums, but also include the electronical stuff with the basses and stuff like that and make it more Michael Jackson, everything. And mix up like no rules. And uh, I had to whip the Janne Tolsa, who is our mixer and master guy from our uh, machine. So, I told him, trust yourself, just put some techno, this will work, this will fucking work. Let's do it, because this is our only chance to do it. So, I think um, for me and for us, this is the album has that has some uh, production stuff that we have always wanted to do. And uh, earlier we have had so limited time that we didn't manage to go that far. So maybe some frustration and experiment and, you know, all, all, you of, cannot, that, all of that put together. You cannot fuck amazing. without mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Corona. <laughs> what the fuck is that? And, and, and to ask you about that, about that experiment, about that sound, I, I felt like this album had a lot of dark undertones, perhaps uh, of all yeah. the, uh, the albums that you guys have released, this is probably the darkest album, or let me say this, is the most Finnish melancholic album that you guys have ever released. Uh, is that something that now perhaps we'll see more from you guys? I don't know. After this, maybe we need at least one party song. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe Swedish Jesus yeah, on I, Pedro I, with underwear and strings? <laughs> a new dense panic, a new version of dense panic. Uh, it depends what you are wearing. <laughs> <laughs> you promise to come. So listen, if, if uh, I, I know you guys are playing at Dark River Festival, I'm hoping to be there uh, in the summer to see you guys play. Hey, at Dark we River could make Festival. a clip for the next video. Yeah, and then we can do some shooting for the next video. 100%. Oh, of course. And uh, some. 
some acting for that because it's a nice nice scenery it's it has woods and uh, well it's a crappy place but we see there <laughs> the crappy places work for us like mm. yeah exactly I, I think it has a lot of I think it has a little bit of TK in it. You know what I mean? We can use some portable yeah. toilets and things like that, you know, make things fun. But you are coming to Dark River Festival. So that is a really nice festival. It's not so big. It's a really Finnish festival. It's really nice. We were there. In it's, the it's glad to hear that you are choosing that one. Yeah, we not were there those in, we were massive there in festivals. 2019. We came to Dark River in 2019 and we loved it. And uh, if everything goes well, that's what we're planning on doing to be there this summer to see you guys play and see all the bands play. We really love that festival. It has a really finished vibe to it. Yeah. For food, uh, potatoes and sausages. <laughs> and, and there's sauna there. And there's and beer and sauna. And sauna there. So it's great. So, uh, and yeah, the battle it has a stage. Vibe. There is a stage that has been like, how many years it goes under the power lines, which is very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of a festival, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a fun, it's a fun festival. Uh, when it came to your vocal performance on this album, uh, was it was it difficult? Was it different from previous records? Uh, did you try to change something? Uh, how how do you see it? I think um, I have. I had done some different kind of uh, voice things, but that those are not so obvious for me. So I, I, I don't recognize those. But in, for example, the beachy stuff in Kuolettavia Vammoja. Was that you? So that was new stuff with for me and Saku, and also I think it's more uh, sometimes more growling and uh, like nuances with the vocals. So I've tried some stuff. Basically, me and Saku sing the same thing, but uh, as always with our yelling shouts and stuff like that. But uh, that's also in the production that uh, Janne Tolsa made, like more lighter and the background vocals coming on and off and like more like plus and minus and yin and yang. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a, a favorite song on this album that you're dying to, to perform live? And I know you guys have a, a kickoff show that's sold out, so... Yeah, tomorrow we should play at uh, Helsinki Ice, Ice Hall. So I'm waiting for the last part of um, Cat Tanssi. When you sing, Jalat eivät edes kosketa maata, kaksi lentää, eikä pelkää. Sitten katselee, kun toinen kuihtuu, mutta tosi lentää, mutta pelkää. <laughs> so we are singing together about... Uh, uh, Linda's featuring in that song, or uh, background vocals. So I think I will cry that song because it means a lot to me, and that is my text. And it has, well, maybe these ten albums combined together because I just noticed few days ago that how many point paints I have put these things and what I'm singing about. I didn't know earlier, I thought this is just some kind of message from the stars or something. <laughs> but I, I ain't doing this thing. I ain't doing these songs. I, when I got the piano, something just comes up. But now I know that I have been putting pain points for my mother's Alzheimer's disease for the first 10, 10 years that she died in my arms. And uh, after that, I started to sing about this. And after that, 
about the kids. And when the universal Satan came, my mother died for that Alzheimer's disease. So then the party ended. So I had to think about what the fuck I'm going to sing about next. <laughs> and uh, then there was only me. <laughs> and at the global warning, then there was you guys over there. And at the Omen X, now it's us. So I didn't know that, but now I know the Omen went through. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, uh, and outside of Omen, when you look back at all of the discography, what, what song gives you the biggest buzz when it comes to performing at live? With the, all the songs of our songs, all the Omen. Omen X or Omen X, okay. No, outside of Omen X, uh, from the previous. Okay, race. Sinulle. So from abroad, outside of Omen X, from our old production, the uh, most uh, effective song for me is now Sinulle. It's from Disco Vibrator, I think. But uh, in Omen X, I think uh, Veresta Sokea is quite brutal for me because you hit your face to the <laughs> <laughs> face to the wall until it, you cannot see. Is it becoming harder for you guys to put these set lists together with so many records, so many songs that the fans love, so many songs that you guys love? Is it getting difficult? Yes, it is. But we have. Um, quite good uh, solution for that. We do theme gigs. So uh, we have an opportunity to, as we have done 20 years now and 10 albums. So uh, maybe year after this, we do uh, kind of a 10 year celebration for the last album that has been we have played like full al albums when when the decade comes the right so uh yeah we can shuffle a lot yeah there is no problem because uh, of course you need to perform this new stuff but uh when we are going tomorrow to the ice hall this is going to be uh reflect of our whole production but of course there is lots of new stuff of new and stuff. of course we are going to play uh so long that people cannot handle it it's a long <laughs> it's a fucking long gig so that's why i'm getting my shares now <laughs> so i'm going to be ru ruined Sunday <laughs> morning it's going to be so, like so will the fans so will the fans yeah they have had like spaghetti in a glass. Of, oh yeah! <laughs> you know, you you guys have done uh, massive tours. I mean, you guys have toured with Nightwish, one of the biggest bands in the world. Uh, you guys are signed now to a, a major label with Nuclear Blast. So the question is, when are you guys touring in North America? I think um, uh, I will talk tomorrow to Hannu that we have to come to Canada. And uh, also, uh, maybe Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Why are you not, laughing? <laughs> it's not that far. It's not that far. I mean, you know. Yeah, and there is not everything is uh, legal because yeah. nobody sees. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think you. Guys, about that? I think you guys need to find a way to come to North America to play in Canada and the U.S. It's easier to play in Canada than it is in the U.S. because of visas and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I think it's definitely time for 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 you guys to do some sort of a of a tour here, uh, so that I don't have to be the one traveling all the way there. You guys can travel all the way here. Yeah, and maybe it would be really nicer if we would do just one hell of a club gig and get the hell out of there. <laughs> otherwise, we would be in prison. Well, I mean, <laughs> with you guys. 
Well, if you guys came to Canada in the winter, it would feel very similar to being in Finland because it's snowing outside. Yes, it is. It's cold, it's dark, and you can go watch a Maple Leafs game or a hockey game. So, yeah. There you go. It's very, oh, very, oh, for a drink. very similar to life in Finland. And we have beer, we have booze. So, perfect. I got, I got one last question for you, and it's not about TK. So, uh, let me how about I, I have a question for you? Sure. So, as we live in the darkness, how about your depression? <laughs> My what, sorry? How about your depression? Uh, Are you depressed? Not right now that I'm talking to you. Uh, okay, <laughs> because in Finland, uh, we use it for drinking. But see, depression... when you are depressed, so... You have uh, a drink. No, no. Yeah, uh, I, I'm trying. just anxious. This is for the panic for the geek, so I'm just having a few. He's trying yeah. to say, because here is so dark, like somewhere in there, it's okay to be in depressed. Nobody cares. No, it, 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 it's, it was worse during the pandemic, obviously, because people couldn't go anywhere and the, the country is already dark and it's cold and, and you already spend yeah. too much time at home. But it's a little bit better now. I mean, personally, I, I went through a little bit of a depression earlier on in, in 2022. Um, yeah, I had also deep one. Yeah, it was it, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, but, you know, you always have to look forward to the light at the end of the tunnel. You have kids. I, I have a son. So I look at him as yeah. the motivation to, 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 to get up in the morning and, and, and do my thing. So you, you just try to stay as positive uh, as you can. Sometimes it's, it's difficult. But the last question that I have for you is about Two Times Terror. Uh, yeah. When are we going to see a new album? Well, we have a new drummer. So he has been kicking my ass like hell. <laughs> Actually, he's my son. So the old Two Times Terror band is no more in well, actually, it was first of all two of us, but uh, well, I can tell you there is like killer stuff with that, but we need time and it will come and our son, son will play in that band and also our daughter is singing Isa Maiden and my two sons. So. Uh, yeah, at least one song with my whole family. I was going to say it's, becoming, the band. it's really becoming a family, a, a family. I'm not going to call it business, but a family project. Yeah, because that that way it started, and then we went to the gigs with our friends, and uh, to do it. Same time with Turmi and Katilet doing two albums, two tours and stuff like that. Uh, it was also always difficult and stuff like that. So, uh, but I have lots of songs. I have done after that when I quit it, this thing and we need to put it on the hold. So after that, I have done lots of stuff that doesn't go to Turmi and Katilet and She's done lots of lyrics and uh, what do you want to say? No, the new two times there is quite different than the other one because there is definitely some uh, deep, deep, deep shit. No, no, deep, deep shit because it's all uh, about family because there is, like he said, there is a drummer, our son, he's 11 years old. There is our daughter singing. So because we are saying uh, painful things um, and when you are uh, saying those things and you are taking part of the whole family it takes some it takes lots of uh, we have to plan everything because it's not easy but we have to we have to do this you I... all have to listen to this that because this is a strong and powerful family we all have to say and people doesn't have to understand it wrong we have a message and you will hear it. And after that, we will be naked. 
Of course. All of us oh. around the fire, <laughs> dancing together, holding hands. So now you understand why it's difficult. All the family is naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because they are underage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, you, you can't put that on video, that's for sure. Oh, We're yeah. going to blur it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can blur it. You know, yeah. people say, and I, I don't know if they say this in Finland, but they say this in North America, behind a great man, there's always a great woman. I, I think in this case, behind, in front of a great woman, there's a, there's a great man. Yeah, yeah, if you are putting it from behind. <laughs> yeah, of course, there's a great man. <laughs> Or otherwise, it's the this one. Yes, yes, yes. No, there is always a great woman. And the only way there is a great man if the woman says so. Okay, this is Sparta. Okay, exactly. It's the reverse Sparta. It's the reverse Sparta. Yeah. She's the Spartan. She's the Spartan. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Really, I really appreciate you guys taking the time today. I know you're in your hotel. You have a gig tomorrow uh, with the boys from Lord of the Lost. Say hi to them for me yeah uh, i'm a big fan of that great fan and good good uh, good friend of, of chris they have sexy thing them. going on yeah yeah they have great shit they have a, a new album as well uh thank you once again really from the bottom of my heart thank you for taking the time today to talk to me uh both of you and uh, i really hope to see you guys this summer in finland and i'm excited about that two times terror coming sometime in the near future so excited yeah about at that. least one single at time Hey, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. I'll yeah. take it. With videos dancing naked. And next <laughs> at the bonfire. At the bonfire. I will bake you a cake. Oh. Yeah, Linda will bake you a cake. Perfect. Okay, now now I have even a bigger reason to come. Yeah. See you at Dark River. So, see you there's there. a cake. 